So if you really believe that, you ought to say it right now for these folks. <clears throat> Regarding Hartsville-Jackson Airport and corruption, the fact of the matter is hundreds of articles have been written about Hartsville Jackson corruption and actually none, none have been found. And regarding the state issue, the state takeover of Hartsville Jackson Airport, I was the mayor that negotiated the 20 year lease with Delta Airlines, signed by Richard Anderson, keeping Hartsville Jackson headquartered in the city of Atlanta for 20 years with a 10 year option. Ms. Moore may not know that, but that's the longest lease agreement that Delta Airlines has had with the city of Atlanta since Mayor Hartsville. So the CEO of Delta Airlines, the biggest employer in the state of Georgia, trusted me enough to sign a 20-year agreement with me. And what Ms. Moore probably also does not know is that when Richard Anderson and I negotiated that 20-year agreement, we put a clause in place that makes it very difficult for the state of Georgia to take over the airport without a capital call. So if the state actually took over the airport, they would have a significant debt obligation to the city of Atlanta. She wasn't, wouldn't know that because she wasn't involved in a high stakes negotiation in any way. Further regarding Hartsville Jackson Airport, all of the stories, all of the things you've heard, what have you found? No person who was a friend of mine, close to me, went to jail. And so at the end of the day, she's trying to use Hartsville Jackson. She's talking about, they talked about it uh, in a press conference for Buckhead City. Buckhead City is supporting Felicia Moore. They're backing her. They're backing her through a safer Atlanta pack because they wanted her to be mayor because she can't cut crime. And if you can't cut crime, guess what's going to happen? The people in Buckhead are going to leave a new city. So on issue after issue after issue, Felicia Moore can't offer you anything but negative criticism because she's never had to do the big job. What she won't say is, how did you let the police department shrink to 1,340 officers and never do a thing about it? You're the second most powerful person in the city of Atlanta and you watch the police department shrink to 1,340 officers, and you never did anything about it. And because of that last year, 155 people were murdered. The number one issue in this campaign is corruption. I stand on my name, my daughter's sitting right there, proud of her father. The number one issue is crime and violence crime and violence that occurred on her watch. And all she does is make excuses and cute comments. That's not what Atlanta needs. You guys have to get a seat time anyway. She wants to respond. Almost well, definitely, because you didn't answer my question. But that's I definitely good. answered the question. You think? I said that I'm, yeah, what I, do I know I, I did? I have the floor, sir. I have the floor. So number one, you challenged me to say whether you were in, under investigation. If you listened to my question, I said your campaign. The Seeing Reed campaign is under investigation. Once again, you're wrong. Scene, it is no, not. You are interrupting me. No. Can I get a moderator? Because you're lying. Yes. You don't get the same. You don't get the same. I'm not lying, and that's why you're interrupting me, because you don't want me to finish my purpose. Yes. Right. So thank you. Let me have you. The Seeing Reed campaign is under investigation, and the Seeing Reed campaign has stopped the attorney for that campaign for being able to talk in front of the grand jury. That's why this issue has been delayed when Kasim Reed said that there was no investigations going on. Secondly, I am the president of the Atlanta City Council and you know very well what the duties are. And I am the head of the legislative body of council. And what you don't know is that I have been advocating along with the other council members to get the 30% pay increase for our officers because we were losing them and they were asking for it. And the Atlanta Police Foundation study that we had said it and we, along with the community, pushed for it. I was at community meetings. I was doing my job. And so you know very well that I was not the mayor of the city and that's why I'm running to be our next mayor. Now, Shelly, so she I just said something. something. So there it goes again, oh, being disrespectful and interrupting. You never do that to me, sir. Okay, your turn.
Okay, I'll wait until that's complete silence so everybody can hear. You all are only able to pass the 30% pay raise for police because my administration left $200 million in cash reserves. Right? So the reason that you were able to pass the pay raise was because we left $200 million in cash reserves. And once again, your comments about my campaign, totally false. My campaign is not under investigation. My attorney did not agree to waive attorney-client privilege, which any person who is intelligent would not have agreed to waive attorney-client privilege. The Justice Department did interview that attorney, and after interviewing that attorney, found no wrongdoing. So now my campaign is not under federal investigation. The Justice Department interviewed the person that you said that we stopped them from interviewing, so you were wrong. And neither I nor my campaign is under investigation. And the police raise that you just bragged about, 30%, you only funded because I left $200 million, double A plus credit from Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. And despite that, the size of the police force today is what? 1,340 police officers. Because you don't stand behind the officers and they don't believe you. And the only reason that the $200 million that he claims he saved in the reserves for the city is because this person 